The SR-72 Dark Star is one of the most mysterious and futuristic planes ever imagined. This plane is supposed to be the successor of the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, the fastest and highest flying spy plane ever built. The Lockheed Martin SR-72, colloquially known as the Son of Blackbird, is an American hypersonic unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV concept, proposed privately by Lockheed Martin in 2013 as a successor to the retired Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. An SR-72 test vehicle was expected to fly by 2025, according to the company. However, with its stealthy design and electronic countermeasures, the SR-71 was capable of flying at Mach 3.3, 2,200 miles per hour, and reaching altitudes of over 85,000 feet while evading enemy radar and missiles. The SR-71 was also outfitted with sophisticated cameras and sensors, capable of capturing high-resolution images and data from any location on the planet. The SR-71 was so advanced that it served for more than three decades, from 1964 to 1998, and was only retired due to budget cuts and the emergence of spy satellites. But what if there was a plane that could fly even faster, higher, and stealthier than the SR-71, a plane that could reach hypersonic speeds of over Mach 5, 3,800 miles per hour, and fly at the edge of space while avoiding detection and interception by any adversary? A plane that could collect real-time intelligence and strike targets anywhere in the world within minutes? That is the idea behind the SR-72 Dark Star a concept that has been rumored and speculated about for years but has never been officially confirmed or revealed by the US government or Lockheed Martin, the company that designed both the SR-71 and the SR-72. But is the SR-72 Dark Star really possible? And if so, why hasn't it been built yet? In this video, we are going to answer these questions and explain why the SR-72 Dark Star will never become a reality. We will look at three main reasons why the SR-72 is doomed to remain a fantasy. Its technical challenges, its high costs, and its lack of strategic necessity. The first reason why the SR-72 Dark Star will never become a reality is because of its technical challenges. Achieving hypersonic performance is not easy. It requires overcoming several engineering and scientific hurdles that have not been solved yet. Let's see what they are. One of the biggest challenges is how to power a hypersonic plane. Conventional jet engines cannot operate at such high speeds because they cannot compress enough air to burn fuel efficiently. That is why the SR-71 used a hybrid engine that combined a turbojet and a ramjet which allowed it to accelerate from subsonic to supersonic speeds without changing engines. However, even a ramjet cannot work at hypersonic speeds because it cannot handle the extreme temperatures and pressures generated by shock waves in the air intake. That is why the SR-72 is supposed to use a scramjet engine, which is a type of ramjet that allows air to flow through it at supersonic speeds, creating more thrust and less drag. Scramjet engines are also more compact and lighter than other engines, which makes them ideal for hypersonic flight. However, scramjet engines are also very difficult to design, test, and operate. They require precise control of airflow, fuel injection, ignition, combustion, and cooling. They also require a very high initial speed to start working, which means that they need another engine or a rocket booster to launch them. Moreover, they have very limited flight time and range because they consume a lot of fuel very quickly. So far, only a few experimental scramjet vehicles have been successfully flown for short durations and distances, such as NASA's X-43A and X-51A Waverider, DARPA's Falcon HTV-2 and China's WU-14. None of these vehicles have reached or sustained speeds above Mach 6 4,600 miles per hour, which is the target speed for the SR-72. Another challenge is how to build a hypersonic plane that can withstand the extreme heat and stress caused by friction with air molecules at such high speeds. 
the SR-71 had to deal with temperatures up to 600 degree Fahrenheit, which caused its titanium skin to expand by several inches during flight. The SR-72 would have to endure temperatures up to 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,982 degrees Celsius, which would melt most metals and damage most electronics. That is why the SR-72 is supposed to use advanced materials, such as carbon fiber composites, ceramic matrix composites, and thermal protection systems that can resist high temperatures and reduce weight. However, these materials are also very expensive, scarce, and difficult to manufacture and maintain. They also have to cope with other factors, such as vibration, shock, fatigue, corrosion, and erosion. A third challenge is how to control a hypersonic plane that flies at the edge of space, where the air is very thin and the gravity is very low. The SR-71 had to use a combination of aerodynamic surfaces, such as wings, tail fins, and rudders, and reaction control systems, such as thrusters and valves, to maneuver and stabilize its flight. The SR-72 would have to use a similar or more sophisticated system to adjust its attitude, altitude, speed, and direction. However, this system would also have to deal with the effects of hypersonic flight, such as shock waves, turbulence, instability, and unpredictability. Moreover, this system would have to be integrated with a guidance system that can navigate and communicate in a hostile and dynamic environment. These are just some of the technical challenges that the SR-72 would have to overcome to achieve hypersonic performance. There are many more that we have not mentioned, such as stealth, sensors, weapons, safety, reliability, and interoperability. All of these challenges require a lot of research and development, testing and evaluation, trial and error, innovation and creativity. They also require a lot of time and money. Which leads us to the second reason why the SR-72 Dark Star will never become a reality, its high costs. Developing, building, operating, and maintaining a hypersonic spy plane would require a huge amount of money that could exceed the available budget and compete with other priorities. Let's see what factors influence the costs and how they compare with other options. One of the main factors that affects costs is research and development. R and D. As we discussed in the previous section, the SR-72 would need to overcome many technical challenges that require advanced and innovative technologies, such as scramjet engines, thermal protection systems, guidance systems, and hypersonic weapons. These technologies are not mature or proven yet, and they require a lot of experimentation, testing, and refinement. According to some estimates, the R&D cost of the SR-72 could be around $20 billion, which is comparable to the R&D cost of the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, the most expensive weapon system in history. Moreover, the R&D cost could increase due to unforeseen difficulties, delays, or changes in requirements. Another factor that affects costs is production. The SR-72 would need to be manufactured using specialized materials and processes that are not widely available or scalable. For example, the SR-72 would need to use carbon fiber composites and ceramic matrix composites that can resist high temperatures and reduce weight. However, these materials are also very expensive, scarce, and difficult to manufacture and maintain. The SR-72 would need to consume a lot of fuel to achieve and sustain hypersonic speeds. The fuel that the SR-72 would use is JP-7, a special type of jet fuel that has very low volatility and high thermal stability. However, JP-7 is also very costly and scarce, as it is only produced by a few refineries in the world. Moreover, JP-7 requires a complex engine starting method using triethylborane, TEB, a highly flammable and toxic chemical that ignites on contact with air. The SR-72 would also need to be refueled in flight every 90 minutes by specially modified KC-135Q tankers that can carry JP-7. According to some estimates, the operating cost of each SR-72 could be around $200,000 per hour, which is more than four times the operating cost of each SR-71 Blackbird, the fastest and highest flying spy plane ever operated. How do these costs compare with those of other spy planes and satellites? The U-2 Dragon Lady is a high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft 
that has been in service since 1956. It can fly at altitudes of over 70,000 feet and carry various sensors and cameras. The U-2 has a much lower R&D cost than the SR-72, as it was based on an existing design and used conventional technologies. The U-2 also has a much lower production cost than the SR-72, as it was built using common materials and processes. The U-2 has an estimated production cost of $35 million per unit, which is less than 4% of the estimated production cost of the SR-72. The U-2 also has a much lower operating cost than the SR-72, as it uses standard jet fuel, JP-8, and does not require in-flight refueling. The Orion series is a family of reconnaissance satellites operated by the National Reconnaissance Office, NRO. They can orbit at various altitudes and carry various sensors and cameras. The Orion series has a higher R and D cost than the SR-72 as it involves developing complex space systems that can withstand harsh environments and perform various missions. The Orion series also has a higher production cost than the SR-72 as it involves building sophisticated spacecraft that can operate autonomously and securely. The Orion series has an estimated production cost of $1.5 billion per unit, which is 50% higher than the estimated production cost of the SR-72. However, the Orion series has a much lower operating cost than the SR-72, as it does not require fuel or maintenance once launched into orbit. The Orion series has an estimated operating cost of $15 million per year, which is less than 8% of the estimated operating cost of the SR-72. These comparisons show that the SR-72 would be much more expensive than other spy planes and satellites, both in terms of development and production, and in terms of operation and maintenance. The SR-72 would require a huge amount of money that could exceed the available budget and compete with other priorities. The SR-72 would also face budgetary constraints and trade-offs that affect the funding and prioritization of military and intelligence programs. For example, the SR-72 would have to compete with other hypersonic programs, such as the Air Force's hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept and the Navy's conventional prompt strike, CPS, which are designed to deliver hypersonic weapons to various targets. The SR-72 would also have to compete with other intelligence programs, such as the NRO's Future Imagery Architecture, FIA, and the Air Force's Advanced Battle Management System, ABMS, which are designed to provide integrated and networked intelligence capabilities. As a result, the SR-72 has some potential. It might still work. If Dark Star from Top Gun Maverick is any indication, it will not be an unmanned aircraft either. It is unclear whether the SR-72 will ever fly, and even if it does, it may never see US Air Force service. We hope you enjoy this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified of our latest videos. See you next time.